Think outside the box when it comes to assessment. One of the biggest challenges facing us history teachers is how to keep up with an ever-increasing workload when it comes to marking and assessment. But I think there are always ways we can change the way we do things that could have a dramatic impact on this. First idea would be use marking codes. Not exactly revolutionary by any means, but using a set of codes can dramatically decrease the amount of time spent marking. If you're anything like me, then you could write the same comment on student work over and over again. If you can write a set of codes which contain a mixture of what the student has done and what the student needs to do to succeed, then you could technically cut your marking time by more than 50%. Here's a set of codes that I developed for use in our department. You can download these codes as part of this, this presentation and this lecture. Another idea would be to use a service such as Jing or Screencast.com. I first saw Jing demonstrate, demonstrated to me several years ago by an assistant head teacher at my previous school. It's a free piece of software which allows you to record whatever is on your computer screen and your voiceover. In this particular demonstration, the assistant head teacher had recorded himself giving feedback to a student on an essay. He started at the top of the document and gradually scrolled down, commentating to the student as he went. At the end, he simply stopped the recording and then uploaded the video directly to the sister site Screencast.com. The great thing about Screencast is you can also create different folders with different privacy settings. So therefore, you could create a situation where every student in your class had their own folder for their own feedback. If you want an upgrade from Jing, Camtasia is a costly but far more advanced version. Have a look at this example I created uh, using uh, Camtasia and Screencast for a student's GCSE work. Okay, Dion, I've just marked your uh, Germany paper and I'm just going to talk you through um, where I think you've gone right and perhaps where I think you could improve on this. Um, with the first question, the what does Saul say show you question, the technique for that is identify two things from the source. And you can see in the picture you've got your vote Hitler um, in the background. Um, you've also got lots of people queuing up on a bread line um, for free bread and soup during the dark days of the depression in 1932 and underneath the picture it tells you that it's in Hanover in Germany in 1932. Now in your answer what I'm seeing is you using your own knowledge um, and, and on this question you do not have to do that and you will get no credit at all for using your own knowledge. The key thing is to identify two things, at least two things, that are happening in the picture even using the attribution you have identified one and then brought in your own knowledge so for that reason on that one you got one mark so my, my simple advice for that one is um, make sure you say what you see say what you see um, the next question was the describe the impact of the Great Depression on Germany um, it, it's worth five marks in, in your exam and, and you've actually got three here um, the reason being, you start the answer off um, quite well by stating that there was a Great Depression um, in the 1930s, in the early 1930s. You then go on to say um, that people suffered in Germany as a result of this depression, but you could have given more specific reasons for that suffering, I thought. So, for example, you could have said that 40% of factory workers um, were out of work. You could have said that two out of three university graduates couldn't get a job. Um, etc. Um, you also could have, I think, mentioned uh, the fact that the popularity of the communists went up and that actually meant that Hitler and the Nazis could attract more voters. Um, you've made a little error as well at the end of the um, paper because at the end of the paper you've mentioned the Enabling Act um, helped Hitler and the Nazis. I'm not really sure how that links to the question um, and that's the only issue that I've got with that bit there. It doesn't really link back uh, to the question and, and there isn't really a relation to, to what you, you're saying and that's why you've got three but there's certainly potential there but I just think you need to learn the facts about how the, the depression impacted on Germany. The other thing is always remember that self and peer assessment are valid forms of assessment when they sit alongside teacher assessment. 
Peer assessment is nothing new, students marking each other's work, but if it's done in the right way and the students are properly trained in this method, it becomes powerful and a great time saver for the teacher. There is also self-assessment. This can be done against specified success criteria during the lesson or after particular tasks. I've used a simple grid before, which you can see on the screen now, where students draw the face that represents their view on whether they've met a particular criteria. You could also have red, amber and green boxes in your classroom. As students walk out, they can place their book into the container that they believe represents their understanding or the progress that they have made in that lesson. And that feeds in potentially to save you a lot of time when marking books.